Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 1 from IMO 2023. Uh, International Mathematical Olympiad was held today and we are going to go over the first problem in that competition. So the question is this. Determine all composite integers n greater than 1 that satisfy the following property. If d1 through dk are all positive divisors of n, then di divides di plus 1 plus di plus 2 for every i between 1 and k minus 2. So as usual, my method is to present you with the thought process behind the solution and then we'll uh, get to the solution. I will start with the most naive thing that we could do, starting with some examples and then see what we can do in order to get to a solution and we eventually get to a solution. So the first thing is we have to guess what is the answer to the question. What are all composite integers that satisfy this property? So let's just start with perhaps n equals p squared. Is that going to be an answer to the problem? So if n is a perfect square of a prime, then the prime factors are going to be 1, p, and p squared. And clearly, the first one divides the sum of the second and third one. OK, so that's kind of obvious. How about if we have p cubed, a prime cubed? We have 1, p, p squared, and p cubed. So 1 clearly divides the sum of these two, and p divides p squared plus p cubed. So that's, in fact, a possibility. What if n is a power of a prime? Then you would have 1 p p squared all the way to p to the power of m. And what we need is p to the power of i to divide p to the power of i plus 1 plus p to the power of i plus 2, which is clearly a possibility. So all of the prime powers are a possible answer to the problem. But maybe there is more. So let's try something else. Let's try pq. Then the divisors are going to be 1 pq, and I'm going to assume that q is more than p, and pq. So the conditions that we need are 1 divides p plus q, which obviously does uh, happen, and then we also need p to divide q plus pq. So if you do that, you're going to get p divides q times 1 plus p, 1 plus p and p are relatively prime, so that's a contradiction, because that means p must divide q, which is a contradiction. So if you write in a few more, you see that there's always a contradiction. So it looks like maybe the answer is, in fact, powers of primes. In other words, we need to show that there is only one prime dividing n. So next, what I did was I basically came up with the solution at that point. So let's try that. In order to get to a solution, I will have to usually look at the extreme cases, either the very smallest possible divisors or the very largest possible divisors. So the claim is n equals p to the power of m is the only positive integer that works for every prime p and integer m at least 2. Okay, first of all, we showed that p to the power of m works. Now we are going to show nothing else works. So suppose n is not a power of a prime. I'm going to take the smallest prime factor of n and call that p. So let p be the smallest prime factor of n and maybe a be the next uh, divisor of n. In other words, d1 is 1, d2 is p, and d3 is a. So if I look at that, the last divisors are going to be dk, which is n. The right divisor right before that would be n over p. This is dk minus 1. And the divisor right before that would be n over a, which is d k minus 2. So these are going to be the divisors. Now let's write down the conditions. The last condition gives you n over a must divide n over p plus n. I'm going to clear the denominator so I get pn divides a n plus a p n. Divide by n we get p divides a plus a p. So that's kind of similar to what we got above. P 
divides a times 1 plus p. But p is a prime, doesn't divide 1 plus p, so that means p must divide a. Now let's just start from the left side, from the smaller values. So what we know is d1, which is p, divides d2. But by assumption, we also know that d1 divides d2 plus d3. So that means p divides d3 as well. So p divides both d2 and d3. So now we know that d2 divides d3 plus d4. But p divides d2 and p divides d3. So this tells us that p must divide d4. And then repeating this, so this is pretty easy to see. So repeating this, we will see p divides dj for all j. In other words, every divisor of n is a multiple of p, which means n must be a prime power. Because if there were any other prime factor of n, that prime factor is not divisible by p. So thus, n is a power of p. And that brings me to the end of this solution. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my other videos. And my focus is on walking students through the solutions to problems rather than presenting the solutions. So I always start with exploring the ideas and then starting from the most naive ideas to solve the problem. And then we will come up with the solution. I will see you in the next video.